Hi, Kelly Clement here for Metastock. In this video, we're going to be talking about Blended Order Book. Blended Order Book is a product within Metastock Zenith that allows us to look at level two and depth of market data. I'll be taking you through how to use both of these inside Blended Order Book and teaching you a little bit about what level two and depth of market views are. With that, let's go ahead and go into Blended Order Book. So as I mentioned, we'll be talking about level two market data and depth of market views. Now these are actually two different things and we'll get into that as we get through the presentation. Now before we can talk about what level two is, we need to understand a little bit about what level one data is. So what we're going to do is talk about level one data first and then build into level two. So as you can see on the screen here, level one data is actually a few different things. First of all, we have bid, ask, market, and then uh, it, we kind of pull from those three things for level one data. So first of all, bid, what the maximum price a buyer is willing to pay for a security. So if you're out there and you're buying a security, let's say the market price is $200, maybe you don't wanna pay 200, maybe you're willing to pay 198. Well, you can go in and put in a bid at 198. So that's what bid is. Ask on the other side is what sellers are willing to sell the security for. So if, again, market price is 200, maybe somebody's willing to sell it at 201, and that's the price they're willing to sell. So you have bid on one side, you have ask on the other side, and then you have market right in the middle, which is the willingness to accept price at the market conditions. So kind of right there in the middle what the current price is. And you'll see these pricings across multiple platforms. So uh, for example, this is, a, this is a view of a quote window where we're looking at different pricing and we can see in here that we have uh, last price, we have percent change, we have close, and then we have bid and ask. So let's just, let's just switch over to a quote screen for just a moment here so we can kind of take a view of that. So this uh, is a live view of a quote screen right here. So in this one I have my security list, I have the last price, and then I have bid and ask. So you can see the last price here is 151.30, bid is 151.29, and ask is 151.31. So that one's a little bit tighter, so it's very, very close to the market price. So people are just trying to get a little bit more of a spread out of it to, to pull in their profit. So if you were to go down and go a little further, you may see that spread out a little bit further. But we're not gonna spend a lot of time on that. We're really here to look at at the level two data. So let's go back to our PowerPoint for just a moment. So again, this is the this is a quote screen and we can see bid and ask in there. Now you can also look at level one in a chart. So here we're looking again, bid and ask is important, but we also have open, high, low, close as part of level one as well. So if I were to go over into a chart, let's just pull up in Metastock here. And uh, let's just pull open Apple, since that's what we've been looking at in our quote list so far here. And let's just pull up a, a clean chart of Apple so we can look at this. So obviously on this screen we have open, high, low, and close. So that's our standard way of looking at a chart. Now if you're looking using Metastock Professional and Metastock RT, you can actually right click anywhere in the chart, go to change field, and then you can also look at bid and ask. So if I wanted to view historical bid and historical ask, I can select, let's say, bid, and then it will replot the chart. And now rather than looking at open, high, low, and close, I'm looking at bid. So let's just plot that as a line chart so we can see it a little more clearly. So I can see the historical bid for that price for that over a period of time. So I could do this on a five minute chart or a 10 minute chart, whatever you want, but this is a, a daily example of that. Okay, so that gives us an idea of what we're looking at when we're looking at level one data. So again, quote screen, and then in a standard chart. So these are our two different ways that we can go in and look at level one data. And most of us use level one data on a day-to-day -day basis. It's part of our everyday trading. But where we get into level two is we get into a little bit more detail on that bid and ask. So when you're looking at bid and ask, again, it's just that top pricing. 
Here what we're getting into with level two, or order book as it's called, is best bid, best ask, and knowing what the market makers are doing. So let's talk about a little bit about each one of those so you can kind of understand what they are and how they apply. So let's, uh, let's first of all talk about a market maker. A market maker is a very interesting concept. It's, it's basically, we'll just take a look at it here, a dealer in securities or other assets who undertakes to buy or sell securities at specific prices. Okay, so I mean, that's all what we're all doing, but a market maker has a lot more liquidity. He can actually put in a lot more liquidity into the market and give a broader range of prices. And we'll understand that as we look more at the level two view and as we get into it. So just to give you an example, so when we're looking at that level two screen, if I go back here a few slides, you'll see on the side here, you have these four digit codes. You'll see NAS and then a code. So that means NASDAQ. We're looking at a level two NASDAQ screen here. And then you have this four digit code. And these are a list of different market makers. So if I come back down here, you'll see we have NAS, NSDQ, uh, VIRT, GSCO, and we can come over here, and this is just an example of who some of these are. So VIRT is Virtue Financial, SUNT is Sun Trading, SSUS, Susquehanna Securities, and you can see down that list. So these are what we call market makers. Now market makers can either be retail, smaller, uh, smaller firms, or large institutional firms like JP Morgan or UBS or things like that. So as you look through that list, you can see what each of these market makers is bidding and asking for a specific security. Okay, at this point, what I think we're going to do is go ahead and go over into Metastock Zenith and took a, take a live view of a level two screen so we can see what's going on here. So let's go ahead and switch over to Metastock Zenith. And what we're going to do, you can see in the top of my screen here, I have the code for Apple and then BOB. So what happens is if I'm typing in Apple and then type BOB for blended order book right after it, it'll give me the option to bring up blended order book. So let's go ahead and bring this up. Now there's going to be two parts to the screen right now and we'll get into some of the differences, but what we're going to focus on right now is the level two data. So down here at the bottom, we're seeing the level two data. So we're seeing the market makers on the left and the right here and they go down each side then what you'll see is this column. So let's focus on size here. So you'll see the count of what they are bidding to buy or what they're bidding to sell. So if I look right here, VIRT, it has a bid in for 200 at 150 and 60 cents. Our current price up here is 150.96. So they have a pending bid out to buy at that price. So we can see what they're doing. On the other side, VIRT is also bidding on the negative side. So they're bidding for 100 units at 150, 140. So they're doing a long and a short uh, on a bid. So they're taking both sides and showing both sides as a bid. So you may go down and you may see this throughout here as you're looking at the data. Now, you have this column here for size and then you have this column which is accumulated size. So this is basically a running total of all the bids up to a certain price. So up at the top here, you'll see we have NSDQ, and we have um, a bid size of 300 right now, and then down below, VIRT is offering 200. Well, if I add these two together, I get 700. Then if I take the next bid at 100, that gives me another eight, takes me to 800. Then I add 700, that takes me up to 1600. So it's just a running tally. So as you go down here, so 2900 would be accumulation of every, all the outstanding bids on this side. So if I were to take and just add these all up to right here, I'd be at 2600. Okay, so that's what the accumulated size is. Now, why look at this? Why look at this data? Well, let's take a look here for just a moment. Let's go back to the PowerPoint because there's some, some very important things happening when you're looking at level two data. So one, we're looking for buying and selling at a certain price. So it's kind of a, a way to look at pressure and see where that buy and sell pressure is. Then we can see what the market makers are doing. Well, if there's a lot of, a lot of bidding at a certain price, 
then you know that that's a price that these market makers feel is a very important price at which to buy. So that gives you um, an insight into what they're doing as well. So now you know who's interested in a stock and you can see retail versus institutional. So when I say retail versus institutional, again, we're talking smaller firms, smaller retail firms versus the larger institutional like the UBS, JP Morgan, things like that versus these smaller for firms that we looked at in the, in the PowerPoint earlier. So now there's a few different things that you can do in here. Now, a lot of platforms will offer level two data, but what's unique about what we offer in level two in Metastock Zenith is that you can actually get a lot more in depth than what you can in other platforms. So a lot of, when you have level two, say at your broker or somewhere else, you will have this data right here. You will see this. But up here, you have more detail than what you're getting at your broker. So what we're seeing at the top of the level two view here is we're actually seeing clearing venues. So when you're trading, and let's say you're trading something on the NASDAQ like Apple, and you send out an order, well, it's not necessarily going to clear at NASDAQ. There's several exchanges in the US where clearing takes place. Places like the BATS exchange, the Philadelphia Stock Exchange. Uh, there's a lot of different places that this actually takes and happens. So you can actually see where this bidding and asking is happening and where it's clearing through. So, for example, NAS represents NASDAQ. BAT equals the BATS exchange. So there's a lot of different pricings in here that you can actually look at. So this is very unique to see where the clearing's happening. So again, you can see BAT has, an, has outstanding bids for 900 shares through that clearing place. So that's one level that you can use with the blended order book. Another aspect to this that's unique to the Metastock Zenith Blended Order Book is the ability to pull in data from multiple global exchanges and get an aggregate price. And what I mean by that is, if I'm talking about Apple and you're trading Apple, most of us just, most people trade Apple in the US, but Apple actually trades globally. You're actually trading on the Mexican Stock Exchange, the Frankfurt Stock Exchange, maybe the Paris Stock Exchange. So it actually trades globally for more reach. So when we're looking at this, we're actually looking at an, what's called an aggregate quote. So I can actually come in and I can see the pricing for Apple across the world in one place. So it will give me a list of all the different exchanges and where it's actually trading. And you can choose which venues you want to see when you're looking at the aggregate quote. Okay, so we're actually seeing a global quote here. So let's, uh, you can see that I can, across the world here, we have Germany, we have ASC, we have Frankfurt, Mexico, Stuttgart. So it's traded around the world. So it's pulling all this data in and letting you see it globally. Now, perhaps you don't want to see that. So what we can actually do is come over we can right click and we can go into show venues and you can actually choose which markets you would like to see. So right now I have everything selected. Perhaps I only wanted to see the BATS exchange. I can uncheck everything here except the BATS exchange and you can see that that narrows down. Let's say I want to see the, the BATS exchange and also the market makers. Well, now I have that view and I can see both here. So. Having this tool from Metastock Zenith gives you a lot more power to be able to pull in and get that global depth rather than just a singular market. Okay, now there's some other things that we can do with Blended Order Book as well. So if you're using Blended Order Book, first of all, for level two, there's some important things to note. One, you need to have the Blended Order Book add-on for Metastock Zenith. And two, you need to pay a level two exchange fee. If you're not paying the level two exchange fee along with blended order book, you don't get to see that market make it data. They actually make that so you can only view it if you're paying for a level two exchange fee. In the US, only NASDAQ offers that level two view. You can't get it from the other exchanges. So it's only NASDAQ in the US, but there are other global exchanges which offer that level two data. But what else can you use it for? Well, if you're 
these are some of the views that we've already talked about with blended order books, so we're not going to spend a lot of time there. What I, what I want to talk about here is where you can take it next, and where you can take it next is actually in trading futures. So we've talked about globally offers uh, level two, but here with equity futures, commodity futures, energy futures, and continuous futures, what you can do is you can actually get a depth of market view. It's also, also known as a dome, uh, depth of market. So if I were to go back to my blended order book screen here, and instead of looking at Apple, I were to put in the E-mini. Let's just look at the E-mini continuous contract for the S&P. So what I'm seeing now is I'm actually seeing a list of bids and asks at certain prices going out. So if you're trading the E-mini and price is at $24.96, what you can do here is you can actually take up and you can look at how many bids are outstanding. So if we were to look here, so right now at $24.95, there's 1,190 bids to buy the E-mini at that price. So if you were to hit that price, that $24.95, then we would move up and we'd go to a different price because that's the best bid right now. We can see also see on the sell side, $24.96.25, we have $14.85 actually on, on that side. So you can see that buying and selling pressure and how far out people have their trades or their bid or their ask to buy the E-mini at that price. So it's a very powerful way for you to, if you're trading futures, to get in and look at the best bid and the best ask of a certain future. So again, you would just have to have the blended board order book add-on for Metastock Zenith to be able to get in and do that. So to just recap, level two data is a very powerful way for you to look at the best, best bid, best ask, Look at what the level two market makers are doing. See what those institutions and retail firms are bidding and asking to buy and at what price. So you can really nail in who's buying, who's selling. Okay, And then when we get into the depth of market view here for futures, you're seeing that best bid and best ask, but you're seeing it spread out across price. So you can see at what price really the buying pressure is or the selling pressure so you can get in at the best price as well. So if you would like to try out Blended Order Book and see how it can help you in your trading, just visit metastock.com and either call us or chat with us and we're happy to take you through and talk to you more about Blended Order Book and how you can try it in your trading. I hope you found this video very informative and I wish you successful trading.